Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships in 2024. I hope you all had a great Christmas holiday and I hope this new year is starting off well for you. As far as the content goes going into 2024 here, I do have a bit of a goal. I want to enjoy this game for what it is a little bit more. I tend to get a little bit frustrated with this game. Uh, if you've watched some of the live streams, you'll know that I can let the frustration get to me, and so then the live streams don't last particularly long all the time. I'd like to relax a little bit more and just kind of enjoy the game for what it is, and uh, try and continue to make entertaining, fun videos for you guys. I'm sure you all can relate to that as well, as this game can be a little bit frustrating, but I still really do enjoy this game at the end of the day, and I am very excited to continue making content on this game this year. And speaking of content, we have a ship I've never played before. In fact, it's a ship I actually got out of the Christmas crates this year. The Fenyang is what you guys wanted to see in the last ship request. So again, this is ship request. If you haven't seen one of these videos from me before, make sure you comment down below whatever ship you'd like to see next time and I will play it. Whatever is most outvoted in the comments down below, that's what I'll be playing next time. So the Fenyang here is pretty much just a worse Akazuki. <laughs> it's a little bit rough. Um, but before I talk about the ship a little more, I should mention with the Christmas crates, didn't really feel like making the uh, Christmas crates video. I don't know, just seems a little bit weird. I may as well just uh, stay away from it. I did get all of these ships, all of these highlighted ones here. I was debating on making the video or not, but I want you to know that I didn't pay for any of those Christmas crates. It was really just CC bonuses, getting me a ton of doubloons throughout the year. And so I didn't actually spend any of my real money. The drop rate was decent, I will say, but notice how many of the tier seven ships are here. Uh, I found that most of the way through those Christmas crates, I wasn't really getting any of the higher tier or the rare ships until the very end. I actually went and got all of the lowest tier premiums you can get before I got any of the rare ships, like maybe a Fusion here. A uh, pretty scary ship from back in the day. So Christmas crates were dropping a lot of ships for me, actually a little above what the drop rate was, but they were all the lower tier ones. So again, kind of just reinforces what I think about buying the ship you want outright instead of doing the whole loot box thing. But I did happen to get the Fenyang, so that kind of worked out in our favor here. So I can actually play this on my main account and not go over to a press account, for example. The main issue though, the reason why this ship is just worse than an Akizuki is the main guns. Really, they have a much longer reload. And to try and compensate for that, the damage has been buffed up. So the alpha damage on the HE and the armor piercing is higher, but it's not enough to make up that lost ground on the reload. Another big issue is the HE pen on these guns. This is old Akazuki here, where that ship used to have no HE pen. It did get a massive buff a long time ago, up to 30 millimeters. This one starts at 17 millimeters of HE pen. And if we look at the armor viewer, that means just base, the ship would not be able to HE pen itself. Uh, you're aiming for these little superstructures then to do any sort of HE damage into destroyers which is really, really bad. Uh, so we do have to take IFAG here. So even though the fire chance base is much higher, we're pretty much forced into IFAG, much like old Akazuki was, and that sucks. So our fire chance does get cut down to 6.5%, which is still decent, but given the build we have with this main commander here, this upgraded commander, yeah, it's, it's a little rough. Without IFAG, we'd be closer to 10% fire chance. So it would feel a lot better. And it's possible to run it without IFHE, I guess. Um, the recommended build here is actually not recommending IFHE, but there's just too many situations where I need HE to deal damage to things. We can rely on the armor piercing a little bit, but as soon as a DD angles to us, suddenly our damage drops to zero. Not needing to take Superintendent is nice. We get the nice Pan-Asian smokes on this ship, as well as a torpedo reload booster here on specifically deep water torpedoes with a longer reload than Akazuki. They do have a little more range, but they only hit battleships and carriers. So a little bit rough as far as their utility goes. Other than that though, a pretty standard DD build. We are still gonna run concealment. Survivability expert getting us a little bit more HP, but again, we have a little bit less HP than Akazuki. So 
a very weird premium ship, I gotta say. There's a good reason, I think, that I didn't pick this thing up earlier. And the upgrades, again, pretty standard stuff here. But again, Pan-Asian smokes feel pretty nice. We have an okay speed boost. Defensive fire, not sure how useful that's actually going to be on this ship. Uh, but I guess we'll see. Um, that's going to be it for the Fenyang. Let's play some games and try and enjoy ourselves with this weird tier 8 premium DD. So when starting any game when you're playing a destroyer, it's really good to just look at the enemy team's lineup and know what you're facing. Things to look for are radars. So does Oshikov have a radar? I uh, can't remember. It might have a radar, so we'll be on the watch for that. Are you going to win any gunfights against the DDs? I think I'll win against Kigero and Azashio very easily. Cossack, probably not. Our concealment is quite a bit worse, and our damage output could struggle. Against the battleships, there are some secondaries here to worry about, and of course, there is a carrier, as well as a submarine to watch out for. So, a pretty dangerous match, but fortunately, it is tier 8 for us, so we don't actually have to deal with a big up tier, for example. I'll play a little bit aggressively. We want to also keep in mind how much support we have from our teammates. Our guys are pretty slow here, so I am going to play a little bit more passive. But uh, we might actually pop into the cap here. Unfortunately, these torpedoes are going to be hard to use, I think. <laughs> uh, only hitting battleships and carriers means, well, we miss out on a lot of the enemy ships that we can go after here. So the utility is going to be a little bit worse. But I really do enjoy using Pan-Asian Smokes. One of the reasons that I really enjoyed Yu Yang back in the day so much over something like a uh, gearing, for example. Well, we are now spotted. And so the cruiser is going to overshoot. Very nice. I was a little worried about that. I played a little aggressive coming in here, but that's OK. Cossack, fortunately, is on the other side. So that's going to mean we're dealing with the Azashio here. But the concealment, you can see, is a bit of an issue, unfortunately for us. Azashio at least can't actually hit us with his torpedoes as well. Kind of a weird scenario there. But maybe we'll look into the ACAP here. I don't know. There's an enemy sub. As always, I do want to just run away from those as, as base. I really dislike fighting them. There's not a lot of opportunities for me to do anything. Oh, we'll see. We also have an island here that we could possibly use to our advantage. I really want to catch this Kagero, for example. That'd be really good. Okay, Mr. Kagero. You're here. Unfortunate that they do get the cap. Excuse me. Sorry. Look at how aggressive that guy got. Oh my goodness. Alrighty. The enemy sub is also here. Spooky stuff. Again, not sure how aggressive to be. Our team is dying rather quickly. But Kigero's out of his smoke. Let's see the DPM. The alpha is certainly better. If you've played any Akazuki, you'll know that salvos like these don't feel like they happen all that often. Drops off as he saturates, certainly, but 3k? With some of those salvos was pretty nice. The DPM certainly does feel a little worse. <laughs> but that's okay. We did manage to take him out. I'm going to risk a turn here. If the island will let me. I want to get my torps for the Brandenburg Scharnhorst here. If they push in. They actually don't. Interesting. That means I kind of want to put him here. That's really bad for me that the sub is there. But he's not up right now. Come on. Okay. We torp the Brandenburg. Let's see what happens. We should be using our smokes to farm, by the way. That's something I'm not doing right now. But they are starting to run away. Which is good for us. I think that Brandenburg stays lit. I'm not actually sure. That's something you got to keep in mind as well. If you are playing a destroyer where you want to be smoking up and farming, you got to make sure people are going to stay detected during those opportunities. 
Okay, we do land one. Nice. He did the full turn, which is a little bit tricky for us to deal with. Yeah, they are very much in the lead. Okay. Time to smoke. And get ourselves some HE pressure on this Brandenburg. Shell arcs seem better as well. I think the shell velocity was a little bit better. Okay, somebody else got the fire, Bayard. That is A-OK. -okay. Nice, we got the second one, no FP on this guy. Smoke is done. Done a decent job of dispersing it. The DPM's okay. Um, it's not as long of a reload as I thought it was going to be, based on looking at the stats comparison. Feels like it has some DPM at least, but... It certainly feels odd to be missing DPM as well as pen compared to an Akizuki, and our torpedoes are far more limited as well in what they can do. So, I think it still is just going to be a worse Akizuki. But Akizuki is a pretty strong ship, right? So, it's okay that it's worse, I guess. All right, moving on. They have decided to kite away a little bit here. Maybe we should actually focus on moving towards the middle of the map here. That might be a good idea. And can we stay undetected here? Doesn't look like it. Let's try our defensive fire. What do we got? Brandenburg's outer range. Seven? I mean, keep in mind, a lot of those were... Huh. Interesting. A lot of those were going to be the, the fighter planes there. But to be fair, we actually did take down a lot of the planes, uh, strike planes as well. We only did 3,000 damage. So possibly we were getting all the kills, but somebody else was getting most of the damage, I guess. That could be a thing. All right, Charn Horse coming in. That is good news for us. We'll torpedo, I guess. And we'll get our smoke go up again. That's the power, by the way, of these smokes. Is that we are actually allowed to... Uh, I think he's going to turn in. The, the smokes allow us to just farm for a bit, and then they're done, right? They don't actually commit us to a specific point on the map for very long. That's one of the main problems with the American smokes, for example. Okay, getting a few fires. Now we got to aim a little farther forward. No FP on the Charnorst here. Yeah. Somebody else got the fire. That's fair enough. Oh my goodness, that's a buyer. Um, we're probably dead. Maybe our friendly buyer kills him. I, the Turpitz is still alive. I'm, I'm acting like the Turpitz is dead here. Ichi, because he's angled to us. Yeah, a bit of damage. The fire should kill him, right? Good. Charnor's next. Bayard, does he get his torps off? Although, speaking of torp, Bayard also has torpedoes. Um, okay. Our smokes are running low. AP time, I think. We're sitting on the edge of the smoke here, simply because that allows us to hopefully dodge a lot of these torpedoes. Come on, a few more salvos. Okay, he's dead. Uh, I think we're dead also, but that's okay. Wow, the Azashio hit, that hurts. Ouch, a lot of damage. All right, we did all right, I think. 93k there is okay. I do feel like the torpedoes, the torpedoes are limiting. We didn't have a team in this one. Blowouts happen, we, we can ignore that. I think we played all right in this one. Not sure if I could have done much more. I think moving away from the middle was the right play. 
We just weren't able to clean up the enemy team here before uh, the, uh, the guys that just steamrolled our C flank were able to come back and support. We had a little bit more time. If I was able to kill the Sharnors and then get away a little bit quicker before the Azashio caught up to us, I think we probably would have uh, got a little bit more out of this one, but still, pretty happy. So again, always a good idea to take a look at the team lists when you're playing a DD. Any ship, really, but DDs is quite important. Another Kigero probably can take that guy in a gunfight. Velos, maybe not. <laughs> that might be a little trickier. Although we do have a Cleveland and a Donskoy for radar. No carrier, double sub though, so enemy sub's probably going to be out here, so something to be aware of. Donskoy is on our flank, so that means we will have a radar here to deal with. Unfortunate. But perhaps our guys can take him out real quick. <laughs> um, perhaps some wishful thinking. But that does make me want to be a little more careful here, certainly. So we will wait. I'm not going to YOLO in for the buff, especially uh, until we know what else is here. Kigero's on the enemy flank, so that means the Velos is here. Which is not good for us again. <laughs> Uh, what else? Dyson, Bismarck. Yeah, the battleships don't matter as much. Look at that Donskoy. It's gonna be rough. If they have the Cleveland here too, we're gonna have just a miserable game. Okay. Okay, St. Louis by the looks of it. Okay. That's... Okay. Our team is kind of clumped here. I don't want... Oh! Oh! Wow, okay, they got the buff. So their DD was very aggressive. Torpedoes astern. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I'm playing really timid. Uh, like, this is both aggressive and very passive, if you get my meaning. Just because that radar at any time could just blow us up. Torpedoes astern. Oh, their sub's mid, too. It's also bad for us. Tone is here, too. Wow, okay, they have a lot here. Uh, unfortunate planes, but I suppose that is how it goes. We'll use a defire there. Velos got all the way out there, wow. I don't know what to do here, guys, just to be totally honest with you. I think I have to go out and play the flank here a bit more. Just like there's a submarine right here. I can't deal with that. John Bard is gonna die to it. Maybe we farm St. Louis here a bit? Yeah, we could do that. Get a bit of damage at least. What are what are you doing, Mr. Tone? Does he die? Okay, he dies. Good. <laughs> Sketchy, man. Love to torp a Bismarck here. But I'm actually going to come back and just try and secure the heal buff for our teammates. I think our John Bart dies. But maybe I can pick that up for us. Farm over this island a little bit. Yeah, this one's this one's trickier for sure. Even though there's no carrier in this one. Mm, he's too close to the island for me. I don't think he'll... Well, wow. Is he really going to continue pushing? Maybe he does. Donskoy on 9,000 HP. I mean... We can try. That's the radar, finally. That's good. Maybe some HE. I hit this Velos. At least he has worse shell velocity than us. Don't quite can get over that. He's getting very greedy for me, though. AP might be better here, but we did take IFHE. It allows us to actually hit this guy and kill him. So that's nice. Alright, we take him out. The ship is on fire. Enemy cruiser 
We do eat a fire, but that's okay. Bismarck went down. Wow, a massive blowout going to be in our favor here, I think. Feels bad. Tricky, uh, tricky to know how aggressive to be. I think if I'm more aggressive, maybe I get to play a little bit more here, but then... I do think I could just easily have died to, to Dawn Square Radar there. Velos as well is a very dangerous person to deal with, or ship to deal with. He was very aggressive early on. Maybe I could have played more aggressive into this island here. That could have been something I could have done. I also have no idea where the sub is right now. I have a Dawn Squad backing me up right now, so we should be fine to engage this Velos. Alright. He's going to try and smoke up. I think our shell velocity being better than Aki is a benefit. Like, it's not... It's not so much worse than Aki. It's not as bad as I thought, I guess, is, is the way I should say it. It's certainly not as good as Akazuki, I think, just because DPM is kind of king here a lot of the time. But the extra shell velocity is nice, as well as the alpha damage here. But it just lacks DPM straight up, which makes it difficult to recommend this thing. So if you get it, if you do have this ship, it's not bad, surprisingly. I, I thought it was going to be... Oh, whoa. Sub's there. Okay. Uh, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. It's not bad. It's not a bad DD. I wouldn't recommend picking it up, though. If it had better HE pen, I think probably that would help. I think it being down on DPM, but a little higher alpha damage, shell velocity, and fire chance would make sense as a kind of alternate premium. Uh, the deep waters not hitting cruisers is a real bummer, especially when the Pan-Asian line deep waters typically do hit cruisers. So it feels like this one got a little overly nerfed. That said, though, the alpha damage on these torps is a lot higher than the normal torps, the normal deep water torps of this line, the Pan-Asian DDs, that is. So it's a weird one. Pretty abysmal second game here as far as damage goes, unfortunately. Maybe we get in range for a little bit more here. But if you want this playstyle, Akazuki is perfectly fine and free, which is very nice. And if you want to be playing stuff like this a lot, you're definitely going to grind a lot of research points since that is the best line, the cheapest line when it comes to the amount of experience you need to grind research points. Maybe you want to run range on this thing. It's so hard to get the points to run the extra range on the commander, though, just because we need IFHE, right? Hmm. It's tricky, man. It's really tricky to know. I'm just ignoring the sub, by the way. I don't. I just don't want to deal with that. Pretend like he's not there. The alpha damage is better. I, I I can notice that as well. So even though the reload is just so much worse, it's still... It hits harder, at least. I think it probably would need the IFAG buff that the Aki got. Maybe not that extreme. That line got pretty insane with that buff added to it. But, although to be fair, I guess we're an arms race with the damage buff. So maybe it's uh, over overstating it a little bit. I don't know. Interesting, though. <laughs> this guy wants me so badly. <laughs> Alright, nice. Got him. I think this uh, Cleveland's a good example, too, of where Akazuki without IFHE is actually going to full pen bruisers. That's the, like, real power of 30 mil pen on, on a DD, or any guns, really, is you get to full pen a lot of cruisers as well as retain the fire chance. Even here with IFHE, we still don't pen cruisers. So 
it's a pretty massive buff to go from 17 mil pen, like Akazuki used to have, up to 30. That's huge. Uh, one of the reasons that line is can be pretty powerful. It's a bit clunky to play these days still. Submarines kind of owning in this game. We should really take a look at the score of the last game, though. That one, even though we lost, certainly we played a lot better. Or at least had the opportunity to. Yeah, see? I mean, it can do some good work. Like, you know, just... Even with a team like that, right? Like, we can still do some good work. Just didn't have the opportunity in the second game. Torp's quite limiting still. HE damage isn't bad. Um, but lacking lacking some of that fire damage, certainly, just because of that IFHE. So either we do next to no HE damage and get a few more fires, or we take the alpha damage. And I think we want the just general alpha damage of the HE out of this. So that's why I would still stick with uh, IFHE. But yeah, this, uh, this is a weird one. But cool. That's kind of ship request, I guess. You know, it's nice to... Nice for me to play my comfort ships as well as uh, some of the ships I've never played before or, or haven't been interested in. It's always interesting to see what else there is in this game, and certainly Fenyang is is that. So, ship request, as always, leave whatever ship you want to see next in the comments down below, and I'll just play whatever's most upvoted next time. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope your 2024 is uh, starting off very well. Have a great rest of your day, guys.